Have you checked the children? <laughs> Long days and pleasant nights, fellow travelers along the path of the beam. I am known on this level of the tower. As I mean, for you going to be pleased to join me here for a bit of palaver on hail to Stephen King. Yes, a little softer on the delivery there, but uh, obviously, Bevanitos, and welcome to the horror show. And uh, this is the last of the month before the next Saturday, which will be uh, what to April 3rd if I'm not mistaken discussing everything that is road work the Richard Bachman book as you see back there the Bachman books and all of that delightfulness but talking about road work for its <laughs> 40th anniversary crazy to think about that but you know there are two different objectives in this particular video first and foremost Lady Catherine decided to get me a mysterious psyching tome that I'm going to be unboxing but wait till the end and that's because of the fact that the Psy King collection has grown since the two previous incarnations that I did here on this uh, you know beloved show of mine and always humbled and honored say thank you for anybody who tunes into this and uh, you know well over 250 episodes at this particular point we do have a relaunch that is happening in early May stay tuned for more information about that but bottom line I had previously shown my blu-ray collection slash DVD collection my home media collection in that uh, digital regard of uh, Psy King stuff as far as like films and you know TV series and uh, limited series whatever stuff like that and then I had all also shown all of the you know cool collected editions and like rare uh, bits and pieces uh, of stuff that I had here and there but stuff has uh, amassed in the meantime so much so that like I have stuff hiding behind the shelf here and that's one of the other reasons why Psy King uh, excuse me uh, Cecil and I have the a new Psy King devoted set that we are uh, you know intending to put together before you know the big relaunch here in about a month or so so long story short I just wanted to show you guys a few of the cool things and maybe if you were stumbling upon this video and hadn't seen at least the previous one that was book related you're gonna see uh, you know just a brief rundown of all kinds of coolness and so I don't think I've ever shown this wicked little lady properly aside from maybe some stuff on up. She's spinning around, but uh, Rose the Hat, she chills in my office with me along with none other than, yep, you guessed it, Psy King, and he's rocking that Castle Rock shirt. I'm pretty positive I've actually shown both of these at least on Instagram or on various uh, other videos, but they are from the Clay Guy, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, clayguy.com, he's in Illinois, and uh, yeah, he does all kinds of red statuses. I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna put all of this stuff as the video goes on because there is so freaking much of it. Um, and also, uh, we're gonna get into some brief audio territory specifically in the fact that I did also find a copy of the BBC radio adaptation of Pet Cemetery, And I've been planning on a video that basically covers this and the Salem's Lot radio drama that they did. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, all my friends uh, across the pond, shout out to all of you, you know, whether it's you know, Jacob or Mikey, um, you know, uh, the, the, the whole lot over there, obviously. And uh, yeah, man, uh, it's a video that has been in the works for a while. It will be coming soon because uh, I did enjoy this, maybe not as much as the Mary Lambert original, but significantly more than the remake, although I know that that one has its apologists. So. Once again, trying to make some room. But uh, yes, continuing on with the audio theme of things, I think I showed this previously. Uh, it's got the Marlboro cigarettes kind of vibe going on about it. This is Blood and Smoke, and these were all read by Psy King himself. And uh, yeah, it's like uh, you, you open it up, and nope, there's no, uh, there's no fags in there. But um, yes, uh, it has a couple different cassettes, and this, this design. I don't think this was ever put out properly in CD format, because just... Yeah, just the rectangular format of this just it, it wouldn't really make a ton of sense so that's one that I absolutely love now uh, I had shown this previously but I just want to give another shout out because 
Secret Windows, which is a bunch of different essays and a couple, at least at the time, exclusive stories from Psy King are enclosed in here. It was uh, it was kind of like a, a companion slash sister version of uh, the on writing that came out in the same year of 2000. While this is still fresh in its 20th anniversary, I will be talking about it at some particular point because I've read some of the essays, I've read like, uh, there's a Clyde Barker introduction, there's like a lot of really cool stuff, Straub has some stuff in here too. So it's not just all King himself, it's actually admirers, confidants, friends, and all that coolness. So if you guys haven't checked this out, it's, uh, it's pretty rad status in that regard. Now, this is another one. Uh, in the coming months here in 2021, you need to look forward to Hard Listening, the greatest rock band ever of authors tells all. And so King has an exclusive short story in here, but this is where he has had this uh, Rock Bottom Remainders band that he plays in, and I believe he plays rhythm guitar, if I'm not mistaken. So he's not like lead, like, you know, crazy shreddy or like blue scales or anything of that nature, but um, he has a lot of fun, and we know that King is this musical aficionado and uh, appreciator and respecter, and uh, this is basically chronicling how all of these different authors came together. There is an upcoming. This is, interestingly enough, like a preview episode of a lot of the stuff y'all have to look forward to as well as just an update on collection stuff. So yes, sometime uh, before 2021 is over, I will be talking about hard listening. So look forward to that. Now we are jumping to, so there are, God, there's so much. I have like a pile of books here, guys. And this is a pile of stuff even beyond what you see right there. So uh, there are two different Stephen King companions that are on the market. Now, this first one, which is edited by George Beam, I'm gonna say, which is kind of ironic, you know, in the path of the beam and all that stuff. But uh, yes, it's not a hardcover that I personally possess, but I did track this down for like mad cheap on eBay. I got it for less than 10 bucks, that little make an offer sort of thing with uh, people. But this was, this was actually published, if I'm not mistaken, in the early 80s when King's fame was like really starting to set in. Well, actually, no, not early 80s, 1989, but, um, yeah, just there's great photos. Like, look at him, like geeking out on the little like, <laughs> like dino snake head. As uh, as I take uh, a better look here, but so this is one that I have not checked out properly. Um, so there is part one, the real world of Stephen King, and then part two is the unreal world of Stephen King. Three is a look at the book. So I, I very much look forward to giving this nonfiction, just kind of analysis of King a proper look. And uh, yes, you've got that iconic shot of him in front of his scarific home uh, in Bangor that uh, I guess he allows tours now or something from what I understand. But um, yes, we will we will get to that at some particular point. But that video covering that companion is going to be combined with uh, this. And I was just trying to get the, the release date here. 2009, Bev Vincent was behind the illustrated Stephen King companion. And so I've, I've breezed through this so far, but there is just all kinds of rad status stuff like, you know, candid photos, covers of books. Um, so this is not a text heavy sort of situation. There's like snippets of script stuff in here. So this is one that I really look forward to giving the proper attention to the, the doityourself.com when King was first putting out writing the bullet, which is pretty rad. So like different covers that he was on for prolific publications. And uh, so this is the visual correspondence that came 20 years after the initial companion. So uh, chronicling the Psy King companions is another uh, series of stuff that you can look forward to. And then this is where we've referenced all of these at various points and I know commenters have and you know I have as well. But um, so between Ben Vincent and also Robin Firth. So Robin Firth, just to give some uh, like context, is basically the Dark Tower historian for all of you who are unaware. Uh, worked very, uh, just directly with Psy King for all of the different Marvel comics that were done. And uh, a tremendous job, uh, not only being aware of certain scant details that uh, you know, El Rey couldn't even remember, but 
assisting and kind of maybe leading in certain ways to certain aspects of expansion that made sense. And so uh, the complete concordance. Now I have the soft cover here because this is the revised and updated edition. I've been searching for the hardcover one for a while. It's out there, it's pricey, but the, the issue with that one is that I, to the best of my knowledge, do not believe that they have the updated version in hardcover. And uh, this concordance was updated after the wind through the keyhole came out. And so uh, it uh, got a little bit of a, this is basically a dark tower encyclopedia. So if there is a particular town like Tull, you know, or uh, Hambry or whatever, or if there is a particular character, whether it's Dandelo or whether it's, you know, Cuthbert or whatever, you can basically reference or shard at the bear, whatever the hell it may be. Um, you can get extensive aspects. If you really want to deep dive like a, uh, a tower junkie properly, I cannot wait to discuss this book. But um, as great of a correspondence as it is, the two aforementioned Bev Vincent, I, I sadly think I've rubbed Bev Vincent the wrong way a little bit when I did a series back in 2017 called The Road to the Dark Tower Movie because of the fact that he had written this book called The Road to the Dark Tower and it was an homage and I shouted him out with every single episode of my coverage of the original Dark Tower series and of course uh, 4.5, uh, excuse me, uh, th 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 yeah, 4.5, what am I saying? But um, yeah, went through the keyhole. But nonetheless, so uh, exploring Stephen King's magnum opus, this is great stuff. And then you also have the Dark Tower companion that um, this, to the best of my knowledge, is very similar to this. I, I know Bev is a really good friend of King's, and so I, I very much look forward to checking out all three of these tower specific books because that's the thing anytime i'm that far away from the path of the beam i just start start itching man i'm similar to roland in that regard you know mr desk chain and i'm like okay i have to at least get back to the path at some particular point and i'm putting something very fun together a crossover episode with mike kearns from mike's book reviews where both of us will presumably get back to the path and have some very cool palaver I'm very much looking forward to that. So that's another bit of recent acquisition along with uh, just future episodes you guys have to look forward to after the channel relaunch in May. Now, I'm pretty sure I showed these before, but um, all of the uncollected Psy King stories, I have gone in every sort of effort to accumulate. And I had to start cataloging them because this one, one of Psy King's, I, I believe his first uh, published thing, The Glass Floor, um, this was his first like properly published thing. This was actually collected in uh, uh, the recent Cemetery Dance release of the uh, excuse me Night Shift. But um, it's it's interesting because there is some great artwork here from Glad Chadbourne, and it's different artwork in that particular version. So initially, I was thinking, oh, I could give this away or you know sell it off to you know somebody or whatever. But since Glenn's artwork is amazing for the Glass Four. It's not like the greatest story, but I mean, it was a young Side King, cool Twilight Zone sort of twist. Um, and Stephen King's first story here, I know I talked about this one previously, The Killer. Yes, great original title, but I still love it and I'm very glad that I have that from uh, uh, Famous Monsters of Filmland. Then the Blue Air Compressor, uh, originally published in this heavy metal uh, magazine. Uh, it's a Great story about a writer who, you know, he's, he's like chilling, hiding out in the boonies and he has this landlord who pisses him off and he decides to like take the next step. So that's one that I'm not going to dwell upon because of the fact that, yes, I know I talked about it previously. Same with the Lawnmower Man here. I, I basically have this new cataloging system of all of the uncollected short and comic stuff and whatever. So that is very cool. Um, Vincent Rush. Still, guys, if you can... Contact Vince directly on Instagram or, you know, track him down on whatever social media sector. This little It mini comic that he did, fantabulous, so very rad status. Continuing with the comic theme, not the reprinted version. Yep, it's, uh, it, I wish it was in slightly better condition, but Bernie Wrightson's artwork in this, in some ways, despite my affinity for the campiness of the George Romero film, I just, I love this comic retelling of it. One of those things. Uh, and obviously I've been, uh, I've been thinking about doing a Stephen King comic specific video for a while. 
This one from Marvel for N is one of my absolute favorites. It's an expansion on the visual comic that back there, none other than Scott Baker, my homeboy, who got me that great version of Just After Sunset as a gift. Eternal thanks for that because that version has a DVD with the entire motion comic on it. This expands upon the motion comic though. It adds like a, a prologue and an epilogue if I remember correctly. Fantabulous. Um, Psyking's first foray into writing comics if I'm not mistaken. I got to portray this character. It was an absolute love and this is actually one where I have to break the order briefly because we made a short film if uh, you are new to the proceedings called Sweet and uh, yeah, that was at least uh, as similar as I looked around the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Sweet on the Horror Show channel, it basically, so for American Vampire, this was half written, at least in this initial volume, half written by uh, Scott Snyder, who went on to a lot of fame writing Batman, and then half written by Cy King. And Cy King wrote the Wild West portion of it, whereas Scott Snyder wrote the Roaring Twenties version where our lead character Skinner Sweet reappears. So that was pretty dope. And uh, if you guys haven't checked this out, so rad status, and it was a pleasure and an honor to portray the character, but it's just awesome that I still have this wanted poster that uh, we still we still throw around every now and then that we need to finally get back to it and uh, make that sequel that uh, Cecil and I have been batting around for many years now, but between Dylan's new nightmare and a uh, secret project of my own, we're not sure when that's gonna actually come about. But uh, also, if you guys weren't aware, there is a great adaptation right here. Yep. Road Rage. It's uh, so it's a Richard Matheson homage adaptation that Joe Hill and his father did, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a ton of fun. It's basically about a bunch of tweaker bikers who run afoul of a 18 wheel driver who is like railing them off the roads, and it's uh, it's bloody, gory, so much fun. Also, I know we talked about this one previously, but. There was a single volume adaptation of The Talisman, the great collaboration between Peter Straub and Stephen King that um, is apparently, at least right now, they're saying it's going to be developed by the Duffer Brothers and, uh, you know, EP'd by Amblin Entertainment and Steven Spielberg. So it, is there anybody better out there to actually create uh, a, a visual representation on screen, at least, of the talisman. I don't know, but this one was pretty terrific. It also has its own uh, kind of prologue that was unique to the proceedings, and I'm sad that it didn't end up becoming quite as much of a thing as everybody would like. Uh, also, I was going through more stuff. Once again, those Dark Tower comics were so good. This was a little promo thing that they put out when they were switching from the Gunslinger Born volume over to the Gunslinger proper, which was adapting and filling in the gaps of him, uh, you know, basically at the beginning of the very first book and then also doing, um, you know, the, like Tall and, uh, you know, Slow Mutants and all, all that different stuff, but they broke it down into volumes. Very, very cool. But jumping back to Young Roland, this is still one of my personal favorite things right here. Yeah, Jai Lee. Uh, I have to give credit to Cecil for this. He was the one who purchased it for me, and I am planning to have it framed and properly put up on the wall for, uh, yeah, the new set that we are putting together currently. And also, lots of you guys have probably uh, read Deceased. If you haven't, it was kind of a horror-centric DC Elseworlds sort of situation. Once again, props to Mr. Laird because he was the one who made sure that I had this Robin looking up at uh, Pennywise or presumably the Joker sort of situation. And then also, this is a very cool Entertainment Weekly thing. It's not like a revelation of information, but if you, you don't have the patience necessarily for scrolling through like just pages and pages of Wikipedia stuff, this is a very, very cool book to obtain, um, The Ultimate Guide to Stephen King, uh, on, on screen at least, and uh, that's kind of what we were trying to do with the Hail to Stephen King on screen panel that myself, Sarah, Lou, Blue, uh, and Mike did as uh, that for uh, what Phoenix Spearcon last year. We are already in talks for another panel this year, which is incredibly exciting, so very, very cool, but um, yes, I know it's not on newsstands anymore, but it is a lot of fun in that regard. 
So now I jump over to a few of the other new additions. I think I've shown this before. My bookmark, man. Isaac Bell, dude is the shit. A, uh, a longtime supporter of the channel, and uh, usually with the Psyching reading, that is something that I have to give my due diligence of respect towards. And then another thing that I have to prop Mr. Laird for. Check this out, man. So this basically came with the score for the 2017 It. I'm not sure if it was both 2017 and uh, the sequel a few years later, but um, yeah, it's got, uh, obviously you guys just saw, All's Well in Dairy, Children Ought to Travel in Groups, Streetlight Curfew, Strictly Enforced. Very much that dairy mentality of, hey, some kids have disappeared, whatever. It's gonna be fine in the long run. Let's just keep our heads down, whatever. But um, yes, it's a recreation of the Dairy News, another thing that I want to get framed at some particular point, and uh, mad props to him for that. Another thing I have to get framed at some particular point, and a uh, lady I uh, spent some time with many years ago is the perpetrator of this acquisition. So I don't think I have ever shown this one before, and it's gonna be tough to give it its proper justice, but just look at the full extent of, it's one of those multi-image sort of things where you have to look at all of it. It's like a Where's Waldo. And just to see all of the different references and stuff there, uh, I have to keep it brief, obviously. But, um, and then it is accompanied with the map and the breakdown that gives the specification of, there is 171 different references in just that image alone. Crazy, and uh, I can't believe I haven't shown that on here before. Uh, just the last few bits, at least, of stuff I'm not sure has been showcased previous, but um, so there are three different versions, technically, of uh, the Dark Tower comic books, and so I'm gonna have to do some repositioning here real quick because this is also kind of a informative sort of bit. The big bad boy that they initially had was this mofo. And this was essentially the initial adaptation, which has now become like the, you know, the, the first series, so to speak. And it adapts all of the young Roland stuff, uh, like the Gunslinger Born, which was essentially adapting the young Roland bits from the first book. And from the fourth book, Wizard in Glass, and yes, I know I have uh, drawn the ire of some people with my affinity for that fourth book. It's one of those love it or hate it sort of situations. Uh, it has all six volumes in here, if I'm not mistaken, which is, uh, what, The Long Road Home, uh, oh boy, Treachery, I think, Battle of Jericho is in here, Fall of, uh, Fall of Gilead, it's compelling stuff. But the great thing, if you can track this down specifically, is there is this companion of all kinds of a different, all kinds of different character breakdown, um, alternate covers, like it is as comprehensive, like if you want a true tower deep dive, holy shizzle man, this is the way that you need to go. And they followed it up with a similar sort of approach with this one for the Gunslinger. So previous one, Gunslinger Born, this one, the Gunslinger, and once again, I know, I talked about this previously, but just for those who may have missed it, now, interestingly enough here, you do have the cover from the uh, Little Sisters of Euloria specifically, but yeah, this also has, you know, it's got tall, it has uh, all of those aforementioned bits with, you know, the slow mutants and, you know, palaver with the dark man and all of that from the first book, and so it also has a corresponding companion, but do you not see that this is Significantly lessened in that comparison, so nonetheless a terrific collection. Marvel did one hell of a job with these, and that's where it gets honestly relatively disappointing, and uh, Lady Catherine was the one who actually got this new collection for me, and I know I did an unboxing of this, so you know, keep in mind and you know, slow the roll if you want to talk to you a little bit of smack, but um, so this awesome slipcase hardcover has only the first four volumes of Drawing of the Three. And I'm assuming that's because there is a fifth volume and that is none other than The Sailor, which is basically taking our characters into the third book. And uh, yes, Simon & Schuster actually own the rights to all of the comics now, 
the Psych King comics, and so they've been re-releasing stuff and whatever, but despite my affinity for this, it's not just, just filled with bonus stuff like those two previous Omnibus companions that uh, I just mentioned, and oddly enough, I just still find it weird that they didn't, had to be a rights issue, or maybe just the fact that the story got kind of expanded, whatever it may be, it's part of the process, and unfortunate. How about this mofo, though? Talk about omnibuses that are amazing, and the best adaptation of the stand, period. Better than the recent one, obviously, significantly, leaps and bounds, and as much as I have that affinity for the 94 version, this one just, there is so little omitted. The artwork is amazing. It collects all, I believe, uh, six different volumes because we had Captain Trips, we had American Nightmares, we had Soul Survivors, Hard Cases, No Man's Land. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I was wrong. One, two, three, four, five, no, it was six. And, and The Night to Come has six different issues as opposed to the five per volume. So, uh, and then obviously, the companion. This one is less stacked with additional information, but it does have, it has maps, it has set photos where, you know, they were actually taking photos of specific places that they were using as visual references. So it's still, this is less of a supplemental, um, you know, backstory of characters and all that stuff. It's, it's less of a deep dive uh, than the Dark Tower omnibuses that I showed, but it's a very fascinating, uh, just, uh, peering into the creative process to give that essence of authenticity. So now, at this particular point, I am going to, if I can get this psalm bitch back in there, that's what she said, um, I am going to hand it over to a brief little cross section so you guys can see some behind the scenes stuff uh, behind this bookcase because there's a lot of coolness that is peering behind that I know I showed some of it in the previous video, but y'all gonna get to see it now in case you missed it. All right, gang, ready for the fourth wall break? I'm not sure if I, in the previous instance, did this exactly accordingly, but uh, yes, so we venture. We venture towards now. Yes, I don't know if I have given this the proper bit of love. Hail to the king, yes, it's tough with the shadows of the lighting in this particular area, but this was obtained at Texas Frightmare a couple years ago. Absolutely awesome. And then, obviously up here, we have all of our different pops. And I rotate these Pennywises out. Yes, bloody bevy. And this is a personal favorite, uh, you know, you've got the Got Molly, the thing of evil, right there. And uh, the rest of our crew, and then this tongued Mr. P. Dub from the sequel. And then up here, yeah, little homie that started it all. That's Reezy. Hope you guys can hear me accordingly, but the Tim Curry Pennywise, we can all blame Marsha Parker for that, uh, because that's why I started actually getting these in the first place. And then awesome pop-up book that I showed previously of the girl who loved Tom Gordon. And then we have the Ghost Lone Brothers of Darkland County. That is another uh, just coverage uh, bit that is intended at some particular point. Uh, John Mellencamp, T-Bone Burnett, as you can see, and co collaborating with Psy King on the story there. And then Charlie the Choo Choo, yep. And then other than, uh, yep, Barrel Evans, yep doing their work. So that is the top of this particular shelf. And this is gonna be extensively abbreviated here in this midsection, as you can see, uh, that being one of the newest and most amazing. But uh, yeah, I absolutely adore having that original Gunslinger hardcover. Props to Lady Catherine for that. And all of these being in chronological order, uh, the silver bullet right there is both the cycle of the werewolf that you see right above it, and then also the script that Psy King wrote for the film. And we just continue downward. Yes, that awesome copy of it. The shadow is definitely going to be an issue here. So I'm going to have to pick and choose my instances wisely. And as we cycle back through. So not as much as far as the collectability goes right there. Get to the second shelf of the tower. That is the combined hardcover version of all of those installments that were separate paperbacks, great hardcovers of 
all of those DTs that Grant published when King was doing the stretch run. Continue going there. Looking, looking out. You will probably notice that I have the original on writing there. Hardcover, slightly smaller. Really love that uh, Storm of the Century script. It's also pretty awesome. And uh, my very deliberate placement right there of the revised version of the Gunslinger. Because, uh, you know, loop de doop as we all know. Colorado Kid. That is the illustrated edition of it. Just after sunset, I have to give major creds to Scott Baker once again because this particular version of it has the DVD that has the bonus. Uh, it's just, I guess it's a motion comic, but uh, you could, I, I had it on iTunes already, but having a full on DVD version of it is pretty sweet. Then that special version of Under the Dome, yeah, the autofocus is great here. Uh, shout out to all the Under the Dome apologists and this particular version that uh, in the previous uh, just little shelf tour video that I did, not trying to get too excessive, I showed off the little playing cards that come with this. And the illustrated Joyland. My beloved revival. Elevation and later are at the top even though they should be further down. Hearts in, uh, Hearts in Suspension, yes, I, I did a full video talking about uh, King's recollections of his college career and also some of his instructors, fellow students. Really, really cool video. Nightmares in the Sky, I've shown that off. That is basically, King did a little bit of, uh, little bit of instruction and just like text about all of those gargoyles and the craziness. I love this little portion here, man. Yeah, we've got Gage with uh, Gage with Churchy and then not to be confused with our bevy that we saw up there covered in blood. And then I've been wanting to get the Jack Torrance, the frozen Jack Torrance pop for quite some time, but uh, yet to obtain that. And then the seldom seen bottom level of this shelf. I am literally taking a seat on the floor of the filming room here. Um, lots of people have seen that. Now Shivers 8 right here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I believe this has Squad D. I remember correctly and uh, in the cataloging that I mentioned earlier just so I remember right off the bat yep squad D so there you go and then this is the original version of Blockade Billy uh, it uh, had that bonus story when it was released later on in the mass market and then this is the this is the cemetery dance little sector so we have the awesomeness that is from a Buick 8 about to be turned into a film with Thomas Jane Probably the prize of my collection, the 25th anniversary of it. And if you want to see full on just kind of looks at all of these different books, both of the Secretary of Dreams, uh, Glenn Chadbourne, amazing artwork, Dr. Sleep, and then the Double Day Years that Cemetery Nance has been doing for a while now. So we have Carrie, we have Salem's Lot, The Shining, Night Shift, the most recently released. I'm blessed that I have already uh, pre-ordered my version of their uh, their take on the stand, although I've been very, very uh, tempted to pick up the PS Publishing. Then up here, we have uh, the first two volumes of Gwendy, at least. Now, uh, Gwendy's Magic Feather, that particular version will be traded out whenever my pre-order for the special signed Chismar edition that has a bonus bit from Psy King that is only available there, so they, so they advertised it. Flight or Fright, that's got a story from both Joe and uh, Psy King himself. So that's Q, and then the Dark Man, the uh, collegiate poem that Psy King did. Once again, terrific uh, artwork from, I believe, Glenn Chadbourne. Once again, uh, Big Book of Nikon. I think I had that specifically for, um... oh boy, I have to kind of double check, man. Yeah, I want to say the old dude's ticker which was kind of a telltale heart sort of thing. And uh, one of the few places, all those uncollected Psyching short stories, I swear. And then we have Sleeping Beauties written with Owen. We have this uh, PS Publishing version of Pet Cemetery. This version of Insomnia was done by Mark V. Uh, Zeising Books. And I, I believe these along with uh, the Grant version of Desperation that you're seeing right there. I gave a look at all of those, but as we as we jump upward and uh, allow the camera to refocus, sorry everybody, 
Now we peer behind the proverbial curtain and y'all will see that I have all kinds of different Pennywise that are still chilling in various capacities back here. Huzzah, yep, right in your face, suck it in your face. But, uh, <laughs> and you will see some on the other side, but uh, once again, I did give peeks of these in a previous video. The audio drama of The Mist, very, very dope. Then, Psy King actually reading The Gunslinger, the original one himself. What better than uh, the original author doing it? Then I have to give a shout out to Robert Duell because I actually prefer this cover of the Institute in comparison. This is the UK version, so shout out to all my friends from across the pond that have long supported this channel. And I showed this on the previous collection video. So Mick Garris is riding the bullet. Uh, it has both the screenplay and if you do the flip a dip, it also has the original short story that was later on collected. So that's Q. You guys wanna try to track that down yourselves. This right here, these are really rad. So if you see how good of a look you can get at them. But these are basically Dark Tower coins and they are so, so awesome. Each of them drastically different in their own right. These were from a uh, young lady who runs a place called Channel Sundown. So check that out, support her if at all possible. My very good friend, Amanda Stone. So yeah, I have a collection of six of these, gift from her, and uh, very, very kind in that regard. This is where this sort of filming gets a little bit more problematic. So I will put these up on top. And have the I Am Legend. This collection basically had the original uh, incarnation of a it was the story that Psy King and uh, his son Joe wrote, uh, which was inspired by Duel. Um, it was called Throttle, and Duel being the one that uh, you know was basically the first uh, first film that Steven Spielberg ever directed. So I'm gonna move these around just a wee bit more. These two things, I mean. Yes, 20th anniversary. So this has a new introduction, or excuse me, a new, uh, just like little post bit from Joe and Owen. So it's nice to get his kids involved in just giving some insight about their father's creative process. This is the re-released version of Dance Macabre. And this uh, just has an updated reading list. So that's something cool to check out. I'm actually gonna be talking about Dance Macabre at some time very soon. Stephen King goes to the movies. This is where some of uh, his favorite adaptations, he gives just a brief little introduction about all of them. It's, since I owned all of these already, I still have yet to collect it in the hardcover uh, incarnation because I'm just like, well, I have them all already, so <laughs> how much of a point does it have? And then the awesomeness that is all of these. Yep, yeah, that's right, the Green Mile in its initial published form, which was those six paperback installments. So that's fun. Crouch down a little bit lower. I'm gonna hold off on that because that one is super rad status. So uh, Dark Forces, my buddy Nick Oaks was the one who sent this over. If I remember correctly, boy, I think it was Nick if I remember. And if I am getting the name scatterbrained, I feel absolutely awful. But this was the original, let it autofocus. This was, nope, it's still not doing it. This was the original publication of The Mist was in, in this, which is really, really rad. Collected, obviously, in Skeleton Crew. And then with the cataloging system continuing, got Night of the Tiger, which is in this collection. Uh, boy, Series 7 of the year's best horror. I know this is in a couple different spots. But um, yes, this is, uh, it's not a mind-blowing story. I have reviewed it here on the channel, so something to keep in mind if you're that much of a that much of a purist. And then we have this, I shudder at your touch. This has all kinds of dope stuff. Clyde Barker, obviously Psy King, various others. This is uh, at least where I found my copy of Revelations of Becca Paulson. Um, no illustrations accompanied with the story, but um, so that's something to keep in mind. 
And then the further cataloging, Night Visions 5, Dane Simmons, George R. R. Martin. I mean, this is a steamed company for King to be in for this one. And this is the Reploids, which is another uncollected short story. And I'm very, very stoked to have this in my collection. This is one of the few where I really wish it wasn't a prior library copy. This is, as we let it adjust, well, if it's going to get to it, <laughs> uh, the Arbor House Treasury of Horror and the Supernatural. And it, the autofocus is just not cooperating, but this has the published version of the crate that I have been able to maintain because the crate, which, you know, made its way into uh, Creepshow. But this is one where I, I am just astounded at... Uh, the awesomeness of this one I'm pretty positive came from Nick Oaks because this Legends collection edited by Robert uh, Silverberg. Boy, the autofocus, and it's got to be the lighting, guys. I apologize. but um, So this one is especially rad, and it's very tough trying to do this, but, I mean, check that chisel out. Very iconic bit with all, with all rolling there. Uh, this is the Little Sisters of Euluria. Chills within this one. Now, the the special version of it that Grant did is insanely tough to come by. So, and then on this side of the shelf, lastly, sorry, trying to make this a little more streamlined, everybody. So, this was a gift from, uh, uh, Boy, C2, K2, boy, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy, um, but longtime uh, viewer in Maine. And this was apparently a little gift that Psy King put out specifically for friends around the holidays. And it was a very tiny, revised, uh, eventually revised bit of the wind, uh, excuse me, of Wizard and Glass, but check it out. Let's see how the autofocus does for us here. Not quite as good as I would have liked. It's kind of trying, it's kind of trying. It's about as close to an official signature as I have seen. And especially since this was found in just little, uh, little consignment store, little resale store. Is it official? Who knows? But this one is most definitely official. And this one is rad status. Scream plays, so you've got stuff from Matheson from Joe R. Lansdale, who did uh, Bubba Hotep, and then obviously King, um, the uh, the general story that was turned into a portion of Cat's Eye is in that monstrous tome. Holy goodness. Then, as we continue upward, back past our peeps there. Oh, look who else is chilling on the other side. Yep, that is another one of our pennies. And then, just without knocking anything specific over. A few personal favorite paperbacks that I've shown you guys before. Still hold on to the first two of both of these that I own. Yeah. First Psyching book that I ever, ever had in my possession, actually, would be these two. So, very cool in that regard. Tossing backward. And then... These used to be on the shelf proper. Diary of Ellen Rimbauer, which ties in with Rose Red, a prequel of sorts, and then the journals of Eleanor Drus, which is, uh, ties in with Kingdom Hospital. Once again, another, another Mr. Gray. And I'm gonna have to move him up real quick so I can show you guys this. This will most hopefully be joining the set at some particular point, but yeah, Stephen King from his episode of The Simpsons. I've been wanting to do uh, just episode talking about <laughs> that cameo and some of the tropes that he was very nice to endure and accept and be okay with. And then just other stuff that, I mean, I just haven't found room for yet. So Danny Torrance, yeah, trying to find room for him. Trying to find room for this weird little yeah, I'm blowing the I'm blowing the dust away. This Dorbs version of uh, of Jack Torrance. I don't know. I'm less about the Dorbs as far as the Funko stuff goes. But then, just continuing with the Shining theme, Wendy has still yet to make her appearance. 
And another shout out to Amanda Stone because she was uh, responsible for obtaining the Grady twins for me. But this is where having a new set, bigger spot, more of an opportunity to showcase a lot of this. This is another Funko that I just don't know how much I like it. I mean, I have it, but um, as far as the display purposes go, I know this is another pop kind of offshoot that Funko does because it looks like a similar design, but it's their vinyl design, I guess. If you guys are more fond of it, please give me some insight. And now we go down to the lower levels. I do, of course, have the Psy King Pop where he's covered in the blood. This was a Barnes & Noble exclusive, but I just like the one with Molly so much that I haven't, uh, haven't really wanted to cycle it out. And, of course, there's another one of these little assholes there. Keep that in mind. Then we have Psy King as the shopkeeper from that, uh, in my estimation, relatively silly cameo from, uh, from It Chapter 2. And then this is, this is definitely one that I want to get out of the case and display. The Creep. And there's a couple different versions of him. This was the one that I liked a little bit better. But, um... Yeah, such ends the vinyl collection of the King stuff. And then I know I had shown previously this bit of awesomeness. I think I did an unboxing of the Wind Through the Keyhole. Boy, the autofocus is just not being my friend today. But um, yeah, so if you want to see my full uh, just breakdown of the awesomeness, that is this. If it would cooperate, but since it doesn't seem to want to, such is life. And just like I also did a awesome breakdown of the badassness that is this version of Revival, one of the sweetest things that Psy King has done in uh, at least recent times. So there you have it, the behind the screams, so to speak, of the uh, updated collection shelf that Definitely, uh, it's, <laughs> since I had to do it in two parts, it definitely needs some time to itself. But uh, yeah, man, uh, there is more to come, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, just getting resettled. How about that? Yeah, pretty cool to actually kind of pull the curtain back, see some of the coolness that is, uh, you know, chillaxing behind this, obviously, uh, way past capacity bookshelf. So uh, yes, for the channel relaunch and for the new update of Hail to Stephen King moving into uh, back into the midweek, I should specify. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I can put a significantly larger amount of all of the cool stuff on display. But now is the time. I don't know if you just fast forwarded all the way up or whatever it may be, but uh, once again, shout out to Lady Catherine. She has only implied that this is a Psy King sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I'm very curious what this is going to entail. It's going to be all about. Okay, you guys are all along the ride for it with me. So, yes, you can just cut the, uh, cut the tension with a knife, which is exactly what I'm finishing off with right here. Yeah, yep, we've got some of the, I'm just going to make a mess. That's kind of the unboxing aspect is like just throwing throwing the little popcorn bits on the ground and so on and so forth. But yes, uh, the the cutting material, I can throw down there up as it makes its way into an area. So let's see what we have in store here. Oh boy. She kept asking me if I had any idea what it was. And um, I can't say I'm 100%. I've had, I've had various different assumptions. I just always thought it was probably tower related, you know, because certain tower stuff is so insanely difficult to obtain, you know, like the uh, original hardcover, which I have up there, that uh, she was actually responsible for obtaining for me for a birthday. That's still where my gut lies, but um, we, but, well then, my intuition was indeed correct. You guys already saw uh, 
the previous bit from Grant that I had, and I'm shocked. I'm shocked that I'm holding this right now. Wow. Holy shit, guys. Check it, check it, check it out. What's it, what's it, what's it all about? This is none other than the Little Sisters of Euluria, and this is the Grant Edition! Oh, boy. Um, illustrated by Michael Whalen, this special 4,000 copy numbered edition is illustrated with 13 full color plates and 23 black and white designs. This copy is signed by Michael Whalen, so not signed by Psyching, but signed by the artist, and uh, check that out. So this is one of my absolute favorite young Roland stories. It's where he encounters like the only other major love aside from Ms. Del Delgado. Uh, yes, I know there's some expansion in the comics, but that is fine. But let's, I don't even want to ask uh, the amount of money that was spent on this because it's, um, I've been looking at this for a long time and bidding and trying to negotiate certain people down. Like when you get these sort of editions, like you, you don't even really, you don't even really want to read them. That's the, that's the shitty thing, but I will do my best to show y'all really quickly. So check it out, man. Oh boy. This is, um, <sighs> yeah. So Grant, uh, in case y'all did not know, and, and the interesting thing about this, which is why I, I should uh, I should mention that this actually, besides having the Little Sisters of Euluria, I believe it also reprints the original Gunslinger. Yes, it does. Uh, published and embellished with illustrations. So I guess since I have this now, uh, I can sell the other hardcover that uh, uh, Catherine got me a while back. But no, I don't. As much as I love this, uh, oh goodness. So oh, man. I'm just trying to so delicately touch it. Show, <laughs> um, damn, yeah. After once again, I, I was just singing the praises of Little Sisters of Euluria. So yes, uh, it starts out with that story, and it also has the On Being 19, which King put in the, the uh, re-released editions uh, by Grant of the Dark Tower. Uh, is the foreword specific? I'm really, really curious. Uh, yeah, check that out. I don't think I've seen that before, the handprint with the 19. Like if I was ever gonna get a DT tower, uh, DT tattoo of some sort, I don't know, that's really, really rad status. And also this this essay from King about, uh, about that is really awesome, about just the importance of that particular year. Forward is obviously by King. Uh, oh man. Yes, I have seen this before, but goodness Lord. Yeah, once again, more rad statusness. Y'all know the importance of the number as far as just the formative years of a person. Now I do, okay, so the version of this that I have that I have to give a big thanks to Nick Oates, it was collected in, oh boy, I wanna say maybe it was Dark Forces or something. I don't know, I, I have this in a paperback version with some of the illustrations, but most definitely not not this stuff, man. This is a young Roland story, so this is before the Gunslinger, but it's after all of the stuff uh, that we see in uh, Dark Tower 4 with, the, with young Roland. Let's see if we can get to some of these, yeah. Yeah, look at those mofos, the guys who confront him in the town, which is apparently the same town uh, that, uh, or at least the same sort of um, same sort of area. God, I'm trying to remember the specific terminology that was used for it. It was almost like an outdoor courtyard of sorts that um, uh, Mr. Jake Sawyer encounters in, uh, in The Talisman, and Roland is like walking through this dilapidated, deserted version of it. Oh man, James, loved of family, loved of God. I don't wanna like spoil this entire story yet. Yeah, the version that I had does not have this immaculate beauty. Holy smokes. Although it's it's kind of interesting how the illustrations are of an older Roland. I, although this is supposed to be, you know, he's still kind of young, but he's at least a little past the point. Got a shot of one of those vampire nurse ladies right there. 
I had no idea that this was uh, what was coming through the pipeline. And I feel like the pages are already kind of getting a little tarnished. The artwork in this is off the chain, insane. Look at these, look at these full color paintings. I, I just don't even have the words. The Grant stuff is so beyond belief as far as the esteemed amazingness that they have put together in this regard. Um, I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. Yeah, check out the double splash as, uh, as they call it. Wow, holy shit. I'm, I'm having a moment here guys. Just uh, cut me some slack in that regard. And now I'm, now I'm especially curious if there is gonna be anything different when we segue over into the Gunslinger. But, um, yeah, yeah, it, it, well, I'm trying to remember if this is a new illustration or not. Obviously, you know, the man in black with his cards, Mr. Uh, the man of many names, Mr. Walking Dude, Richard Ferris, Randy Flagg, you know, whatever y'all prefer. But uh, yeah, so I won't burden any further. This is a beautiful recreation of the illustrations from the original Gunslinger. And so that is included here as well. Wow, this is a immaculate edition. Yeah, that iconic image with the slow mutants, uh, you know, going after, going after our boy. So man, uh, this is a incredible acquisition, a beautiful gift from, from my lady and I, I feel like I just need to put it right back in the slipcase like right now. Holy shit, man. Uh, what a piece to add to the collection. This thing goes for, this thing goes for a lot more than most of the other Dark Tower stuff. So um, I'm probably gonna ask why you decided to spend this kind of money. But nonetheless, check out that, that eyeball that we have right there. I hope it can do the autofocus. Yeah. See it right there. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. A grande gracias to Lady Catherine. I didn't think I was gonna see this anytime soon in my life. I'm like, you, uh, excuse me, eBay financing maybe? Over the course of, I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna ask questions. I'm just gonna say thank you. And also extend the grande gracias to all of y'all here on The Horror Show. I have been Jaime in Fuego. And uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention is that for the channel relaunch, we we have a new logo in place right now. But we wanted to give the opportunity for young up and coming artists or the like more esteemed peeps who really just want to, you know, just take a shot at it to, to make a gunslinger reference. Um, if you would like to design a new Hail to Stephen King uh, logo, we have a prize pack that we have put together this particular point. Now, when this show first started, we were doing coexist shirts for anybody whose question was initially uh, just chosen for the proceedings and for like expanded discussion upon. We had some shipping issues, especially with certain international audiences, but the channel has expanded enough and has enough uh, monetary reach, I guess you could say, where that's not gonna be an issue in that regard. So the prize pack includes not only that, but a decorative Sutter Kane rule shirt. Yes, because uh, have you read Sutter Kane? He's even better than Stephen King. No, he's, he's not. But um, anybody who has seen the Carpenter film uh, that absolutely knows in the mouth of madness. I have a awesome little Psy King pop that is also part of the package. And as we continue along, because there's still a few different things, I'm just gonna grab Grab and go. We have a rare paperback of the Bachman book, so you could check out the aforementioned Roadwork, The Running Man, The Long Walk, and Rage is included in this version. The banned Stephen King book. We have a digital copy of The Outsider, the entire series, and then we have a couple vintage DVDs, the first two Pet Cemetery films, and The Stand, both of which are out of print. Then the last two bits would be a few books. This is the, uh, I believe the 10th anniversary edition, yes, of On Writing. An amazing tome of insight from Psy King. Y'all saw that there is a 20th anniversary edition out, but I just figured why not put 
my previous copy in the prize pack, pass the love along. And then lastly, another copy of the illustrated edition. This is one that I purchased and was unfortunately damaged in the shipping process, which made me so mad and I was trying to haggle with the person who sold it to me, but I just figure uh, since every photo is intact and it's still a very cool, beautiful addition, especially for any constant readers, if you or somebody you know would like to design a new logo for Hail to Stephen King, as I said, we have something in place right now, but we figured why not give the opportunity to all of the long time constant viewers, readers, etc. the opportunity to just get a cool prize pack. And uh, yes, we're going to uh, stop uh, submissions at I, I believe April 30th, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, right before the final live Hail to Stephen King, which is at the beginning of May, uh, which is gonna be the first Saturday of May. So uh, yes, cutoff is April 30th. If you or somebody you know, um, the website is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the email, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, the horror show 666 at yahoo.com or you can consult myself personally at infuegotainment at gmail.com. So that's your two uh, destinations for submissions. And uh, yes, once again, a grande gracias. I've been Jaime Infuego. You can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. Uh, I do have a personal channel that is, uh, well, seeing a relaunch in about a week. So Infuegotainment is relaunching at the beginning of April and uh, a relaunch of the horror show at the beginning of May, but uh, there's still lots of content there currently. Uh, discussion of uh, you know recent films like uh, Raya and the Last Dragon and uh, yeah, lots of uh, cool uh, older content as well. Some Star Wars stuff, some comic book stuff uh, all over the place, lots of fun. Uh, a like, a share, a subscribe here means a hell of a lot. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, just a reminder once again, April 3rd, first Saturday of the month, uh, live at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We are gonna be talking all about Roadwork for its 40th anniversary, the Richard Bachman Masquerade. That was Psy King, it's a great book. Uh, it, it's, it's short, so in the week, if you are just uh, you know checking this video out now, there's time, there's still time. So uh, once again, I've been Fuego. Y'all have been rad status. Check out the Hail to Stephen King Facebook group. Over a thousand peeps having awesome palaver about all things Psy King. Um, humble and an honor to have had you here and uh, to forge forward with more content in the future. So uh, until the Wheel of Cop comes around once more, hasta luego, sin amigos, constant readers and viewers alike, say thank you, most notably to Lady Catherine for a unbelievable gift. And uh, I hope that we share more of this palaver sooner rather than later. And until that instance occurs, remember to stay scared and read Stephen King. I, I feel like I need to reread Little Sisters of Euluria like right now, but I just don't know if I'm gonna read that book because I wanna keep it all nice. Anyway, much love, y'all.